right, so I've got this piece that I made the other day. It's just a pretty simple pinch pot, and I want to show you a little bit of cleanup and how to take a pinch pot that's fairly simple and turn it into something you might actually care to keep. So I've got two kinds of ribs that I'm going to use to clean this up. One is this metal rib, and this metal rib is, is my favorite rib, actually. I use it for lots and lots of stuff. Um, and what I'm doing is, not like this, but back like this, I'm actually dragging and pressing this rib along that surface. And my clay has been drying up a little bit, covered overnight, so it's leather hard or maybe just a bit wetter than leather hard. And it, that allows me to be fairly forceful with this. I'm pressing, I've got my hands on the inside and I'm pressing on the outside of the clay with the rib to smooth it out, get rid of any of those little bumps and cracks. Sometimes you've got a little crack that's bigger and you, you have trouble, like as you drag your rib across it, it doesn't clean up. And so you can add a little bit of clay into some of those, just a little bit of wet clay. I'm going to recommend you not start adding wet clay, I'm sorry, uh, slurry, uh, slip, because um, people have a tendency to just get these pieces sopping wet and then they start to fall apart. Um, so I'm going to use mostly this rib to clean up the outside. Now you can see how much, how much smoother I've got this. If I want to at this point, I can decorate it, I can carve into it, I can add a, a roller texture or something like that. Um, but it's an intentional texture at this point, as opposed to over here where it's just the leftover from what I was working on. Now, I'm also, I've also got some marks on the inside, and I can get inside with my metal rib, but it's a little harder to fit it in there. Um, I'm, I'm pressing it in, and I'm able to fairly uh, to smooth it out, but an easier rib to get in here in the inside is one of these smaller ribs. I like the red ribs. Um, they're particularly useful. There's also some orange ones that are a little bit thicker that you can do the same sort of thing with. Uh, and I've just got my hand on the outside and I'm dragging along the inside. Now if you've got bigger hands than me, you might consider getting inside when you're building this piece and you might plan to make a piece that's a little bit larger to begin with so you can get your hands inside of there. Um, of course there's also tools that we can use. Um, but now my top looks kind of a mess and so I'm going to use a feathling knife or a paring knife and I've got, I just happen to have a paring knife handy here and I'm actually going to cut this top off. I'm keeping my knife level as I spin this around because I'm trying to cut this uh, top off fairly evenly. We'll see how good of a job I've done. Yeah, it's, it's not bad. It's also a little, it's, so it's fairly even here. Now there's some e unevenness side to side, like this part's a little thicker than right here. And some of that has to do with the fact that I hand built it rather than threw it on the wheel. And that's okay, a little bit of variation is okay. If it bothers you, you can come in and patch a little bit on the places that are a little bit thinner. Um, you can also squeeze like I'm doing. And you can also cut a little bit of that off either with a loop tool or with a knife if you're bothered by that. Mostly I would say don't worry about it. Um, and I've just kind of cleaned up those edges. Now I'm actually going to grab a wet chamois. So this is a piece of chamois leather. Um, we've got some in the drawer. You could also use a folded paper towel. Um, throw it away when you're done. Um, or a piece of felt also works. But I've got this wet. I had it soaking in my water. And now I'm going to drag it over my rim. And I'm going to spin my piece as I, as I go. Um, you can do it on a banding wheel too. You can leave it on the table while you're working if you'd like to. Now the important thing is I'm not just pressing down. I'm actually squeezing my fingers on the corner like that. And you can use uh, finger and thumb. You can use two fingers this way. And I'm importantly squeezing on those sides as I bring this around. It's not just dragging over the top. It's actually a, a, a way to add some moisture and smooth over the surface of my clay but as I add my pressure. Um, this, this kind of approach can help me kind of clean up those edges, make them more uniform. Because I'm spinning this as I go, it reminds me of something on the wheel, right? It looks round and even. Now that rim is a little bit wet, um, but over here on the side that I actually finished up, it looks pretty even. Uh, that, that transition is pretty, uh, pretty nice. Now, I am going to immediately flip this over, which I recommend you guys wait a little bit, wait till the rim is a little drier. Mine's going to stick just a bit to the table, but that's all right. Because I'm also going to add a coil for my bottom. Now, I have this leftover clay I could use, but I'm just going to roll myself a fresh coil. I'm using the whole length of my hand to make sure it's nice and even. 
like when I roll coils to build with. But then I'm going to do one major difference here. I would like this to be a foot, and so I'm going to go ahead and flatten it just a bit. And I'm going to use my hand just very simply to flatten this coil. And I think you can see where I'm going with this. I'm going to add a uh, foot ring. Now I can't find my tr trimming or my scoring tool for some reason, but I have a fork handy, and uh, I can use that to score. Uh, if I don't have a fork handy, I've got a knife here and I can use that to score and I'm going to just scratch up where I want this foot ring to be, right? Um, then I'm going to score my the edge of my foot ring and I'm going to, uh, first of all, get kind of a sense of how big I want this to be. I'm going to make it about yay big and a nice easy way to get that edge to be clean and even is uh, to bevel that cut at the same time. So I'm cutting both rings at the same time, or bo both parts of the ring at the same time. That leaves me with a beveled edge that's just a bit wider. Then if I didn't bevel it, score that up, add a little bit of slip, press those two edges together. And now I need to score the attachment here. Uh, I found my scoring tool, so I'm gonna go ahead and score that. Scratch, scratch, get it really roughed up. Now this is leather hard and this is completely wet. So anytime we attach these, this side needs to be really well scored. This side should also be scored, but it's less important. And then I need to make sure I'm using enough slurry. When I put these guys together, I can't just set them like this. I need to use a little bit of pressure down to get that attached onto there. Now this is a uh, attached foot ring. It's kind of weird looking right now. And so I'm gonna come back through with a small coil uh, to clean up the edges. Really small coil in here. This is the same as you would be reinforcing the box on, I mean the edges on a box or a cylinder made out of uh, slabs. Um, anytime you're attaching things particularly wet to leather hard or leather hard to leather hard, it's a good idea to reinforce it if you can. Um, if I've got my uh, loop or my rubber rib handy, I've got it handy, it's just dirty. Um, I can get in here and I can also smooth with that. I have a rubber rib that I can smooth with. Lots of, lots of tools for doing smoothing and stuff like that. Um, and then I can also get on the inside and do the same sort of thing. I'm only uh, partway done on the outside. But I can get on the inside and smooth that edge up. Now I've got a, a bowl that has, uh, looks a little bit more finished. The top is cleaned up, the bottom has this foot ring in place. I could put my maker's mark on it. I could put a handle on it. There we go, score and slip, and I'm all set. And so that's a couple things you can do to clean up your, uh, your pinch pot bowl that you've made um, so that it's something you want to keep. All right, thank you.